Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today obviously we are starting a new series because this game is called Concrete Jungle and it's new, it's fresh, it's interesting, it's exciting. <laughs> I just got carried away playing this game and I realised, yep, this is the kind of game I want to make videos about. It's a really, really fun game. Now I'm not going to ramble on too much but I'll give you a teaser as to what this is like. It's sort of like a, uh, a strategy slash puzzle game but it's also a city builder and it's a deck building game as well. It's like lots of concepts rolled into one and it's been executed extremely well. We're going to be playing the campaign in this video and I do want to say if you like the look of this game of course check it out first but leave a like on this video if you want to help um, support this and you want to see more of it of course then feel free to do so. But first of all we should of course check this out. Um, let's jump into this. This is Hollyville. This is the first level. It's a tutorial. I'm going to be sitting back and letting the game uh, explain how it's played because you kind of need to know how to play it obviously for these videos to make sense. <laughs> so let's jump in there and let's start the tutorial. Here we go, Hollyville. Tell us what we're doing. <laughs> Welcome to the small town of Hollyville. My name is Lainey and I'm here to show you the ropes. Excellent. <laughs> Looking around is pretty easy. You can use the right mouse or the keyboard's cursor or W, A, S, and D keys. There you go. You can tell what I'm doing easily <laughs> uh, using the mouse there and keys there. You can Good stuff. How to out. use the controls, R and F. Got it. The R and F keys. In front of you, there is a small grid upon which you can place buildings. And here it is right here. Those buildings are determined by a series of cards. Let's draw some now and get started. Okey that will do nicely. <laughs> Here's our cards on the side. At the top here is the next card in your build list. It's a school. Pretty useful. On the card is a small 3x3 three three grid with a building icon in the middle. This displays the building's effect on its adjacent tiles. Okay. Blue squares <laughs> represent plus one point. So the school will give plus one points to the tiles immediately adjacent. So I hope you're following with this, just to reiterate. Oh, okay. You can now place it. Notice how the blue highlights represent the area effect as displayed on the card. Let's put the school here. There we go. And now we can see the plus ones around it as well. You'll notice there are now some plus score markers on the empty tiles that were affected by the school. If we place point collecting buildings on those positive scoring tiles, we'll get points. It just so happens the next card in your build list is a houses card. By far the most common point collecting building. Yeah, the most common one and the only one I've actually seen uh, so far. I've played the first three levels of this and really enjoyed it. I think we've got to click Notice next how first. It tells you on the card if the building collects points or not. It says it there at the bottom. <laughs> okay, we still so can't let's place it. Get some points. Okay, there's going to be a lot of this instructions in the beginning, but believe me, you kind of need to know all of this to uh, get to grips with Great. the game. There we, we go. We have one point due to the combination of the school's area effect and the house. We have a target to reach for each column. That is Currently, correct. Currently, that target is two. You can ah. see your current target right here in the top right. Yep, the big two. In order to fulfill two. <laughs> that target for each column, we need to use a combination of buildings that affect their surroundings and point collecting buildings. Next up we have a car wash. So obviously this one's got negative and positive. This card also has some red squares which means it will have a negative effect on those tiles. But crucially it has positive effects in the places we need right now to bring our house up to two. Select and place the car wash so that our house is given another point. Okay so here's your first taste of strategy I guess. If we put it here we get a negative and uh, the positive is off the grid so it doesn't count. So if we put it on this side, you know, kind of get an extra one there. In the first <laughs> column thanks to our house, school and car wash. That's right. Also notice how the red negative area effect from the car wash cancelled out one of the points from the school. Yep, that's important. Now the important. first column is complete. Look what happens. It disappears. Oh my god. <laughs> it's gone. See that? The column has been cleared. That means you bank the points from that column, which are then multiplied and added to your total score. Aha. This is something I was wondering about a while ago. I think you can actually complete columns with a higher score than the default, and it adds to your points. But It also means you get continue. a new empty column to build in here on the right. That's correct. The immediate aim of the game is always to clear the first column, but you'll have to plan ahead with your building placements in order to do that for future columns. Those are the basics. But let me show you what happens if you forget to place a point collecting building in a column. Fill this column with the following non point collecting buildings. 
Okay, we got a factory. If any building area effects spill off the side of the grid, they will have no effect. You can use this to your advantage sometimes. Exactly, yeah. So the factory, you know, you might want to put over here so the area goes off the side. Uh, anyway, let's put in the other buildings. None of those no collect point points. Collecting buildings in this column. This will likely happen to you sometimes, but just to be clear, it's something you want to try and avoid. Absolutely. <laughs> and not just because we have a brewery and factory next to a school. That is a good point. <laughs> With no means of collecting points, this column cannot reach its target. Therefore, it's just going to sit there while we fill up the rest of the empty land. We ah, once the, the force first clear. column is filled, you'll notice this little button flashing at you. Right up here. All we have to do is click it. To force clear. I actually forgot about this because I haven't had this problem since. So yeah, you click that, we lose However, a heart, and it gets rid of it. clearing isn't free. It costs you one life. Oh dear. You can see how many lives you have left here. Make sure you use your lives sparingly. Once you run out, you'll fail the level. Now see if you can complete past this column here using the next batch of buildings. Okay, very important thing to note is that the buildings, when they're gone, they leave the tile effect behind. Um, so we've got a 1 and a minus 1, so we can start collecting points by putting a house there. And if we were to put a house here, we would actually negate the score. We would collect negative 1, uh, which is interesting. So, oh yeah, we have to... let's put a house there then. Let's put a school here. And what we're trying to do is, you know, create enough tiles to put houses on, obviously. <laughs> and let's put another one there. That's good. So now we can put our house right there and we've got two on that row so it goes away that's good now let's say we put our house if if possible actually let's play around with this a little bit I'm gonna put that there so we can get a free I'm gonna show you a little bit more of what we can do so we need one more house on this tile so we'll leave all of that alone let's put uh, a negative right there see the negative tile doesn't affect the effect that this had on the tiles around it which is um, a good thing to know about when doing this so if we put our house here then we get two this one's gonna have three though which is um, a thing you can do you can get more points than the the minimum or whatever <laughs> uh, let's put the brewery over there and that negative one that was probably a bad move actually because we want to be able to affect this tile or this one right here so um, we're gonna have to put a school there no we need to affect the tile behind it as well <laughs> yeah we need to make this one right here a two that was a bit of a bad move on my part we can also make that one right there a five don't think that's really going to affect us too much. Um, so now we've got to do the houses. Let's put one right there. Then put the school behind it. So that one's got two. That's that bit complete. I don't know why I did it in that order. We could have just put the house in front. But look, we did it. We've doubled the score. And that gives us more score right there. Four by four is 16. And I think you get points for a combination as well. <laughs> yep, we are ready for the next challenge. That was fun. And that was loud. <laughs> uh, but believe me, this is going to get better now. That was the bulk of the tutorial. There's more learning to do. We're going to continue on to the next area, which is called Lufa Fields. Let's go do this. Alright, so here we are. This is the beginning part of the city. That looked like a dump over there as well. Yeah, there's Since lots of cards and tiles to unlock. At Hollyville. Well, apart from the whole... School, <laughs> factory, brewery debacle. It was your fault, indeed. <laughs> I've hired you to develop in the county of Luther Fields, a small commuter town south of the city. You know what to do. Just a few small differences this okay, time. Okay, what are the differences? You now have two times as many build ah, slots. Ah, yeah, we do. You can now choose your next building from either of the cards in the white bracket area. That's going to be important. That helps you a lot. Oh, the excitement! Us government employees need to appreciate the little things. I've also thrown some new buildings into the mix. Okay. This is a green. Yes, <sighs> the card is yellow. Get used to it. It's... Oh, I kind of skipped ahead there. Yeah, she was about to say it's super useful. Uh, we have to start what off by selecting one of them. green is place it where you want as normal. Some blue icons will then appear to show you where you can apply the card's buff. Just select where you want to apply the buff. Ease. If you decide to cancel the placement after you have clicked, you can do so by clicking the X icon that appears over the chosen build ah, position. Okay. If you ever get confused about what a card does, you can right click on any card at any time in the game to have a closer look and find out more about what it does. You need to develop the land without running out of lives. This bar here shows you how close you are ah, from completion. 
Okay, it so... It will fill with blueness <laughs> as you clear columns. Okay, so if you remember our column when we completed the level had the trophy thing on it, then it's just, yeah, it's like a slider, basically. It's going to fill up as we get nearer One to it. One more thing. Yep. The column target is now set at three. Nothing you can't handle, right? Yep, we're good. all good for that. <laughs> if you don't remember, three is the amount you need to get uh, going across. In fact, let's zoom out. Let's readjust this a little bit, get a better view there. I'm going back to City there. Hall. I've got so much paperwork to do with the coming election. Catch you later. All right. Let's do this then. Let's, again, adjust just the camera. Let's get everything on the screen. That looks real nice. Okay, so let's see the green one in action. We get to point at where we want it to go, right? Uh, let's see, what have we got coming up? A car wash, a factory, not a lot of good stuff. Let's, let's put it at a diagonal, because quite often you get things like the car wash, which affects to the side. And that was a nice little start, actually. Um, we can put down two houses and get our three immediately. The factory, though... We're going to put it up here in the corner because then two of its negative tiles don't get effective. Uh, the brewery we will put right there, I think. Okay, so let's put down our first house and our second house and kablam. We've completed our first little column right there. That was nice and easy. So these ones, they kind of look good, uh, but you need to think about how you're going to use them. So I'm going to put it here because we have a brewery there, right? And then it's one negative effect on one tile. Otherwise, you get a widespread of negative effects. Um, so we've got two points so far down in the area. We can cancel that one there. Um, this, though, is going to do us no good on the row that we're in. But we've got a school coming up, so I think I think the best place for us to put it... <laughs> I'm not sure now. I'm going to put it there just because it has a, a better effect. Um, so we can put that there and get a free, but we can also put down two houses. I think that's the better place to put it right now. Um, because we need a plus one here, and we need to be able to increase that as well. So let's put a house right there. You know, either one of these will do it, so we need a plus one somewhere else around here. If we put a shop right there, we get our plus three on that bit. Um, let's see, we can put this thing down, and this is just going to be amazing all around. And we get our three on that one as well. So we're going to go for a combo here, I think. This might backfire a little bit. I better be careful, actually. So I don't overdo this. Because <laughs> we're going to run out of tiles. So we've got a free there. I'm going to put my next house here. And then we're going to do um, the one after. Let's see. What are we going to affect next? The car wash can go there. Make that one a two. And then we can put the green on the negative tile and make it a free. So there's a slot for the house. Okay, our next house is coming up. we got this. Let's put a free there. Let's do a combo. And if we put a house here, we'll get a plus four on the first one. Um, so now we're looking at a supermarket or a factory. See, if we put the factory in here, we've already got this one sussed and the next one. We're only going to negatively affect that one right there. Or we could actually put it there. That would be the better place, wouldn't it? Cool, so let's get our little combo going. I like it. <laughs> Excellent. Nice. Three in a row there. That was really good. We could have done four in a row if I held it out a little bit longer, but... It's probably starting to take the mick. Okay, so we're going to put a brewery on that tile. Block size economy bonus. Yes, we'll come to the economy stuff later. It's not in play at the moment. There's still more elements of this game to discover. We're going to put ourselves some shops right there. We're going to put our house on this tile. We're not going to go for a combo again. Could be a bit of a challenge to do in the future, try and get lots of combos going. I keep clicking on the ones down here, don't I? It's a, a bad habit of mine. So we're going to put that up in the distance. Lots of positive tiles going on at the moment. Let's just give ourselves lots and lots of options here. So we're going to put a house... Um, yeah, we're definitely going to put a house on that one. It's just where do we want to put the next stuff? Because we can make a plus two next to it. Actually, we need to think about getting to plus three on this one. So we'll put it there. We'll put the car wash here to make that one a plus three. And then we need one more plus three here. So we're doing this with a very small amount of houses at the moment. In fact, we could probably go for a combo right now, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to play it through sensibly, <laughs> um, since it's like one of the first levels. Let's put our supermarket again, just up the back here to get rid of the negative effect. That is the winning tile up there, by the way. So we're almost done. Um, let's put down our houses. Oh, I'm clicking on the ones over there again. That should do just fine. Yes, this little menu comes up on the side, and I'm not sure what exactly it's for yet. So let's collect our plus three on that one. Let's collect our plus three over here as well. 
And now we need to positively affect a few things over here. Let's tuck this brewery away. Our school we want to... Yeah, let's get two tiles here with positives. Park Square will then bring them up to twos. Let's use the green to make that one a three. Put houses on it. <laughs> and over here we can get a three on that one. And then with a green here we can get a three there as well. And look, we've done this. We've done it so quick. <laughs> that was great. That was really great. And that's another Excellent. level done. Excellent, indeed. Awesome, we've unlocked a new card, the Wholesaler. Alright, let's continue onwards into the third level. This is the one that I completed a moment ago and then I said, Nope, I'm doing a video on this game, it's amazing. Uh, this is Grapefruit District. So let's hop on in and we're going to learn a few more things about the game at this point. So, uh, where is our friend? Did you hear the news? Ah, there she is. Caribou <laughs> City has a new mayor, some guy called Selfridge. Selfridge? Can't wait to meet him. But mm. welcome to Grapefruit District. As you can see, there's not much there going really isn't, on isn't here. There. Just a bit of a farm. <laughs> so it's a perfect site for redevelopment. You've been doing really well, so I think I'm going to give you a bit more control today. Okay. Up until now, you've been using a preset selection of cards. I'm going to change that by teaching you the basics of deck building. Deck building. <laughs> this is where things get real interesting. You always start the game with 12 cards. These are basic entry-level cards. And most of the ones you've been using so far fall into this category. Mm -hmm. You can tell a card's level by the colored triangle in the top right. This gray-pink color represents a basic level card. Okay, this this confused me at first because I was like, what? Pink? I was expecting them to explain the yellow and the red. If you have a look, like, there is like a pinkish triangle right there. It's not very obvious. You can actually hover over it and it tells you a little bit more. That's really nice. If ever you need a reminder, you've got that right there. Also, we have um, five cards out at the moment, seven on this little thing right here, so that's 12 in total. Anyway, that means it's a basic level card, Remember, as you said. you can always right-click on a card at any time to find more details about it, including its level. There are some other numbers here, too. Let's start with the one in orange. Okay. This number is the card's expenditure cost. When you play this card, the number here gets added to this bar in the top right. When this bar fills up, due to accumulating expenditure from your buildings, your column target will increase by one. Okay, so our column target is this thing, right? It's free. We've got two out of three there. If we place down enough cards to bring this over 60, it goes up by one. Thing is, I did that earlier, and it didn't seem to increase the column um, cost over here. You could still complete it with three. So, not 100% sure about that. Maybe... Maybe I got it wrong there, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if it happens again. So that makes everything harder, since then you need to reach that higher target for your future columns. Yes. In other words, high expenditure costs are something you want to avoid, as it will make your column target increase faster. But seeing as almost every building has an associated expenditure cost, it's inevitable your target will increase eventually. Yep. This other number in yellow here is a bit more positive. It is. This is the card's economy point contribution. In a similar fashion, this number gets added to the yellow bar in the top right. I'll show you what happens when the economy bar fills. Let's place some buildings that are good for our economy. Okay, so you only need five points to increase um, your economy. So anything with... Yeah, a brewery's got two. We'll put you down in the corner. Our restaurant has one. We can put a positive effect in our next row. And the factory... Um, we'll pass on the factory for now. Let's get a shop in there. Let's get another positive effect in this area. And we can start to actually... Yeah, we've got to think about how we're going to get some points down in this area. We've got a plus two on that one already. I think we're going to need to... Let's get the factory out of the way then. Let's just put it there and work around that. You get one every time the yellow bar fills to its maximum. Yep. We can spin this on a new card to add to our deck. Look, Indeed. A new button. This <laughs> button opens the card shop, and that's exactly what it sounds like. You'll get a choice of four random cards to add to your deck. Yeah, so note that it's random. So we pick here, and then we just get four random. Since the wholesaler is new, I want to pick that one, but obviously it's not got a great um, effect. I like this one right here. I mean, you get four points for your economy and six positive tiles. I'll add that in. So 13 cards in total now we're playing with. Got more details about it right here. 
As you can see, five houses in the deck. Good anyway, choice. let's crack on. That should keep you going for a little while. All right, so now I think we're just playing through. I think she teaches us a couple more things, but here we go. Um, so what we need to do is plan this out a little bit. We've got a park square coming up. That's going to do a lot of good and a school. I think what we're going to do is put a house here, put a school behind it. So we've created a plus two there. We're going to put our green tile... Ooh, I was going to put it there in diagonal. We should actually do that first. So we've made that a plus two. If we get another one of those coming up, we'll get a plus one back there. And that should be no problem. So let's, have a look. let's put a house here. We've got four on that one. Let's use the theatre to... We need to get some positives. Where are we going to be a little bit tight here? We've only got three in this row. If we put it right there, like the negative tile doesn't affect it. We negate that one, we get some positives going there. Yeah, that looked like a good move. And then we want to overlap it with something else, really. Except now we've only got a one right there. We need, definitely need a two. Let's, let's do that. That looked like a really good move. We're up to five on that one now. Just for the funsies, I'll put a house there as well so we get lots of points. Um, so we need to get <laughs> something back here, which is what I've kind of overlooked. So with no points on this tile at the moment, we're going to put in a house there and another one there. And then we need to find a way to give that a positive effect. The restaurant will go here, so the negative just sort of disappears. We also need to put some negatives behind us. Uh, sorry, positives in that space. Yeah, I've actually not played this one particularly well. I feel like... We're skimming it very close at the moment. We need the right kind of cards to come up. Um, I think we better get these tiles out of the way now. So we're going to put you there. And you can give us a plus three. Away goes that one. I should probably zoom out a touch or adjust this a little bit maybe. Can't quite see the number over on this side. There we go. Okay, so two, two, two. We need to just get extra positives in there. That solves all our problems. Let's do it. <laughs> That was a really good move. Alright, nice. And now, sort of back to square one. We've got a bit of terrain obstacle over here going on. Let's put in some shops over here on the edge so we can get a house going on behind it. The brewery we'll put there since we've pretty much got this covered. Let's go for a house. And uh, another house right there. So that one's cleared. Then we'll put the factory... That doesn't seem like a bad move. But now we've got no positives in this area. So we need something good like a restaurant going to help out. Let's put it over here. Get a couple of houses down. We'll put in Park Square like that. This goes up to four. And what we really need is points on the back. So we could put... Oh no, that would take a negative down there, wouldn't it? Let's put the factory up the top here. It's sort of out of out of sight, out of mind. And we need to put houses somewhere and get a positive effect going. I think we should put the green here. Stretch it like that. We'll put the school here. We've got a plus two on this one. And we just <laughs> need to get... Yeah, we need to get one with the shops. There we go. I was looking at that tile as if we needed to use it. But we've actually uh, cleared the both of those now. So that was nice and easy. Okay, uh, let's put the brewery on that negative tile right there. Okay, there's our finishing line, by the way, so we're close to being done here. And... Oh, I'm trying to select the one down the bottom again. What am I doing? Houses, houses, give me a school. I'm doing it all wrong again. Let's put you there. And we'll use the school to get some positive effects in these areas. Put another house down. Factory can go all the way up there beyond the finishing line and let's see we've got a park square coming up so let's put you down park square will affect everything positive like that another house here let's put our shops in this bit so we get a two on this tile so we just need four houses although they're not going to come up too quick so we'll start to move all these things over here oh by the way look we've increased our uh, <laughs> Our scores up here, I wasn't even paying attention to this. We can probably select quite a few things. Let's go for the theatre. Let's take another house, actually. We're going to need that at the moment. And let's take the library as well. Wow, I, I totally missed out on all of this, didn't I? Let's take another park square. Um, so our score's gone up to four here, yet we've been clearing these for free. 
That was the thing that I uh, noticed earlier, so I'm not sure when that fall comes into effect. Hopefully it doesn't come to, into effect right now. Let's put you there. See, it's giving us a free and a green, but the marker is slightly lower. No, actually it's the same height as those ones. So yeah, it's going to accept free. Anyway, we're going to put that there, like so. Let's put that thing over here, and we're done. And we finished it with a 5 and a 4, so we don't get to test if it was a 3 or not, but Another you guys watching complete. probably know. <laughs> Another area complete indeed. Wow, that is some noise in my ear. Uh, we're going to call it that for this for this episode. I have really enjoyed playing this. I'm really looking forward to the next, <laughs> the next level over here, so hopefully all of you have enjoyed this video as well. Leave a like if you have, and uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this game, leave me some feedback. As always, it's appreciated, so thank you so much for watching Concrete Jungle. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.